Hello and welcome. We are going to solve this problem together. But first, try it on your own. See what you can do. Okay, so tell us the combined volume of all the tanks at an aquarium is 1.25 times 10 to the 6 gallons. So then they say that the aquarium plans to install a new dolphin tank with a volume of 250,000. Gallons. So we're installing a new tank and we've got some tanks already. What will be the total volume? So I think right away total volume, that tells me we're going to be adding these things. And they want to know what it will be after the new dolphin tank is installed. So let's add these, right? Because we have a bunch of tanks. We don't know how many. Some number of tanks, dot, dot, dot. And this is the initial amount of tanks and the total volume, the amount we would have if we if we filled them all up, right, that volume would be 1.25 times 10 to the 6. And that means 1.25 million, because 10 to the 6 equals a million. Then we're going to be adding a new tank. And this new tank, we don't know if it's bigger or, or smaller, but there's a new tank. And this individual tank has a volume of 250,000 gallons, right, just this one tank. So we want to add this new tank to the total and that we had before. And this gives us a new total, right? What will the new total volume of all of the tanks put together? What will that equal? What will that equal when we combine them? So for me, um, I think this problem is easy to deal with in standard form. So I'm going to take 1.25 times 10 to the sixth and convert it to standard form. To do that, I'm going to multiply 1.25 by 10 six times, which might sound overwhelming at first, but every time we multiply by 10, our decimal just moves one place to the right. So it's going to move once, twice, three, four, five, six places, and then I'm going to fill in the gaps here with zeros, right? And you can see this number, I'll write it down here as well. This is 1,250,000. And what we're adding to that is another 250,000. Okay, that's the new tank. And then we can just add, right, it's 1,500,000 when I add these two. And then I'm going to convert it back to standard form, uh, scientific notation, excuse me. So scientific notation starts with a number like we had before between 1 and 10. It can't be equal to 10, but it has to be uh, either 1 or bigger than 1 but less than 10. Some number with an absolute value, positive or negative, between 1 and 10. So here, if I put my decimal between the 1 and the 5, I get a number between 1 and 10. I get 1.5. If I put it anywhere else, I won't get a number that works that, in that range. For example, if I put it to the left of the 1, that would give me 0.15. It's too small. It's less than 1. If I put it to the right of the 5, I get 15. That's also bigger than 10. It doesn't work. The only place you can put it is between the 1 and the 5. But we can't just change the number value. We still want this to equal 1,500,000, so I still have to multiply it back by 10 to the 6th. Another way to think about what just happened there, to get 1.5, I took this number and I essentially divided it by 10, right, six times, because I moved my decimal six places to the left. So here, to get from the 1,500,000 to this number, what I did was I divided, right, I took this number, I divided it by 10 to the 6. But we want to balance that. You can't just make a new tiny number, 1.5, that's that small. We want it still to be equal. So we balance it out then by multiplying it by 10 to the 6. And these two undo each other, which means that these two numbers are equivalent. So the reason we multiply by 10 to the 6 can be thought of in several ways. I like to think of it because we're still dealing with millions. But you can also think of the balancing act that we're doing here. We're taking our number. We're essentially dividing it by 10 six times when we put our decimal between the 1 and the 5. So to make sure our number is still equivalent, we still have to multiply it by 10 to the 6th. And that's our answer, choice C. All right, I hope this helped.